Uh, hello everybody, this is Clay. Welcome to my man cave, or as I like to call it, my man clave. Um, I have a collection uh, down here of Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, Tim Burton related films and characters, and my kids involvement in musical theater. And I've had some friends of mine that have seen pics of my collection say, hey, you know, that's really cool and all, but maybe you should post a video of it. And so this is my first video uh, posting. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to get it on YouTube and you guys can see it. Uh, but, uh, so yeah, I thought I'd do my first video, so please bear with me. I might make some mistakes and I'll show you my collection and tell you some tidbits, some uh, information about my collection, uh, some little info or whatever, prices or whatever. Um, but so I thought we'd start with my Pirates of the Caribbean collection, so... Let's start here. That is a Disney store. I bought that at the Disney store. It's a Burton Pirates of the Caribbean snowboard. Uh, I just thought it was really cool. Uh, I don't snowboard, but my son did. He was pretty good at it. But yeah, I just thought it was really cool. So that's a Burton Pirates of the Caribbean Burton snowboard. This, or I should say these, are decals that go in the back of the of the, of the back of your car on your bumper. Uh, I got them from an eBay seller in Japan, but I thought they were so cool, you know, they were made out of metal, that they would make good wall art, so I bought like four of them. There's one, and there's a two, and here's two here. But yeah, I just thought it would make good wall art. Pretty cool color, detail, made out of metal. This is a wall plaque that I got from a part uh, collector of Pirates of the Caribbean stuff. Um, he got this at Disneyland. This was sold at Disneyland. Uh, it talks, so bear with me here, and I'll let you listen to what he says. I gotta find the button. Oh, there it is. says. Over here are some vintage Pirates of the Caribbean postcards that my wife and kids got me for my birthday, Father's Day, something like that. Uh, they were at Disney World and they bought this for me. Um, I took them out of the package and just thought they would make good, again, thought they would make good wall art. So I found a frame and they depicted uh, scenes in the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean attraction at Disney World. So there's those four. And I'll show you these four. Yeah, they just depict scenes from various points in the Pirates of the Caribbean ride at Disney World. This is a portrait of sorts of Blackbeard from Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. It's my least favorite Pirates of the Caribbean film. I loved Ian McShane though in it as Blackbeard. So this is an ode to that. This is an Epiphone limited edition Pirates of the Caribbean SG electric guitar. Uh, pretty detailed. I got him for about 400 bucks on eBay. I think you could still find him for around that price. It's got little pirate emblems on the neck. You can tell. Uh, the input's fried, so it doesn't work. That's why it's hanging on the wall, but... Yep, that's what that is. Okay, let me show you some posters. Uh, these posters I'm showing you are 27 by 40. They're original posters. But this is the first release, poster release for Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl. Again, they're all original, and they're 27 by 40. I have the teaser poster of the Helmsman for Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl movie poster. That was about a hundred bucks, but it's in storage. It's rolled up. I wanted this poster out, the official poster, because it had the faces of the actors. Here's a original poster of Dead Man's Chest. Let's see there. And here's an original 27 by 40 poster of Dead Man Tell No Tales. Love that film. 
This is an artist's uh, sketch of what Davy Jones was going to look like in Dead Man's Chest before Dead Man's Chest came out in theaters. No one really knew what it was going to look like, but this is an artist's rendition or artist's sketch of what Davy Jones was going to look like on screen. And I got this from an eBay seller that got this from Comic-Con 2005. This is a Thomas Kincaid canvas wrap of Pirates of the Caribbean. It depicts the scene of when the Black Pearl first arrived and first arrived in Port Royal. It's beautiful, it's full of color. Jack Sparrow's in it. He's right there as he's coming to the dock. In that scene where he's on the mast while the boat's sinking. And there's Will Turner and Elizabeth Swan. And there's Jack the Monkey. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece of man, piece of art. This is a, this actually is a reprint of Pirates of the Caribbean attraction poster that I got at Disney World. Okay, take you over here. This is a Bradford Exchange Pirates of the Caribbean cuckoo clock. It's a warping cuckoo clock. A lot of nice detail. Um, little tidbit here. When the batteries run out, don't try to replace them. Um, they're, it's very fragile, as you can see here. Very fragile pieces, so easy to break, it's not funny. Uh, again, I got this at Bradford Exchange. It was about 200 bucks. All of Bradford Exchange cuckoo clocks are about $200, but Cotton's Parrot comes out there and comes out of the door there. Here we are on the hour, here's Jack the Monkey. But Cotton Spirit come out there, uh, comes out of the door. Here we are on the hour. It, it's, it plays a pirate-like theme, but none of the songs from Pirates of the Caribbean. I didn't like it at first, but it's growing on me, so it's okay. But it's a beautiful piece of wall art. Cuckoo clock wall art. Here's another poster. This is the teaser poster for Dead Man's Chest. It's just a simple Jolly Roger poster. 27 by 40, it's an original, there's July 9th, that was the date for Dead Man's Chest. Pardon me, I'm getting on my knees here, pardon the camera. This is what they call a maquette, it's made by a company called Gentle Giant, who's based in Japan. It's a limited edition, it's like a character uh, version, almost a cartoon version of Davy Jones here. But I thought he was cool, he's got some nice color to him. Cool base. You can see right there. Yep. This is a Jim Shore piece. Jim Shore is a well-known uh, sculptor of Pirates of the Caribbean and Precious Moments. Did a lot of the Precious Moments line. He did a lot of Disney stuff, but he's done some Pirates of the Caribbean. This depicts the pirate on the cannon on the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction ride at Disney World. Just like to show you some details here of him. Yeah, Jim Shore has a unique style, unique color, but very well done. Okay. Pardon the camera, I'm getting up. This is a Jack Sparrow statue that I bought at the Disney store, downtown Disney. Actually, downtown Chicago, pardon me. Disney store in downtown Chicago is where I bought this. It's pretty cool, pretty detailed. Okay. This is perhaps my favorite piece in all of my collection, my entire collection. This is a life-size statue, I guess you could say, of Jack Sparrow. It was made by a guy in Jacksonville, Florida, and he called himself a starving artist. But he made uh, Heath Ledger's Joker, he made Star-Lord from Guardians of the Galaxy, he made Spock from Star Trek. I guess he takes these mannequin bodies. Took, this took him six months to make. Um, he takes these mannequin bodies and he puts clothes on them that does his research about how they look on the film. And I don't know how he does the head sculpts, but the head sculpts are dead on. I mean, that's the eyes, everything's just so dead on Jack Sparrow. The detail. Here's the X on his cheek. 
and the little trinkets in his hair, braids in his beard, the wig, you know, everything's so detailed about him. And like I said, it took him six months to make, and it took me a little over eight months to save up for him. And I worked two jobs and overtime on one of them just to pay for him. It's a lot of work, but it was worth it. And there's this, I mean, he did such a wonderful job. Here he is with his gun. And he's got a sword there in the sheath. And there's the compass. Everything's so detailed. He did the wood burning on the base there. It looks really good. That's a Jolly Roger is motion activated. He's battery operated. Batteries don't work, but it's motion activated. So when you get close to Jolly Roger there, he warns you away, tells you jokes, tells you quotes from the film. But yep, that is my favorite piece right there. Life-size Jack Sparrow. Moving right along over here. Pardon me, I'm going to get on my knees here a little bit. All right. This is a Sideshow Collection statue, premium format statue of Jack Sparrow. Sideshow made two premium format statues of Jack Sparrow, and I got both of them. I was fortunate to get both of them. But yeah, he's just full of color and nicely detailed. There's his compass. Nice base. If I can show you the base. There it is. It's got some bottles of booze there, and that lantern did glow in the dark, but... Battery operated, but the batteries no longer work. And turn it around over here, show you a little bit more of the base. See these little going pieces, little gold coin pieces coming out of that crate, which is, there's the symbol for uh, India Trading Company, East India Trading Company. There's a whiskey barrel. Jack's hands on a map. It's just very nicely detailed, as you can tell, and very nicely done. Okay, this is Art of Disney. This was, I can't remember the sculptor's name, but it was in Art of Disney. Uh, this is called the Pirate Helmsman, or the Helmsman, and he's in the attraction, Pirates of the Caribbean Ride at Disney World. Uh, this is from Art of Disney. He's limited to 300. Uh, he's nicely detailed, nice base, seaweed on the wheel. Again, he's limited to about 300 pieces. I spent about 400 on him. Kind of hard to find now, but you can find him, grab him, because they're pretty cool, very nice. Okay, this is a pin <laughs> that I got at Disney of a piece of cursed Aztec gold. But I broke the pin off. Well, actually, I didn't break the pin off. I just put the pin in the wheel, in the wall there, I should say. I just thought it would make a good centerpiece there. Um, in the background there, if you could see, that's a Pirates of the Caribbean soundtrack to the ride. Bought that years ago at Disney World. That was cool. Okay. These are Pirates of the Caribbean bookends. One of the Flying Dutchman and one of the Black Pearl. I got in England, eBay from a seller, uh, from an eBay seller in England. But uh, kind of hard to find, but they're nice little pieces. Show you a little bit. It's hard to show you some details of them because there's so much going on there. But yeah, that's uh, those are it right there. These are film books of the art of Pirates of the Caribbean or the visual guide, the making of how they made various parts of Caribbean films. That's what those are. Uh, this one I got, this is a Disney, it was made at someone's, I can't remember the sculptor's name, but it was Disney, it was made from Disney. Can't remember the sculptor's name again. Got it from a Pirates of Caribbean collector off eBay. Supposedly Johnny Depp did a digital scan, pardon the shadow guys, of, for this statue. It's about 19 inches tall, but he's very super detailed. It's just super, super detailed. Nice color. Hard to find. 
I uh, found them on eBay, and I haven't seen them since. On eBay or Amazon. There's, this came out after The Curse of the Black Pearl, but before Dead Man's Chest. So, that's what that is. This is Jack Sparrow's dad, a.k.a. Captain Teague, a.k.a. Keith Richards. Who knew? <laughs> but uh, he's made by NECA. He's about... 18 inches tall. He's really known as an action figure, but he's, I don't know, he's just got a lot of detail. He doesn't move a lot, so I don't think of them as action figures. They're tall. And, I mean, look at the vein, veins popping out of his hand. I mean, it's pretty detailed, full of color. There's his booze bottle or his pee bottle. I'm not sure which is which. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a booze bottle or a pee bottle of him. But I'm gonna say it's his rum bottle there, booze bottle. There's mom. Jack Sparrow's mom, Keith Rick, uh, Captain Teague's wife. Okay. This is a Davy Jones statue made by a company in Japan. I can't think of the name, but they're known for their detail. Um, kind of hard to find. Ex a little expensive, not too bad, but there's this keys hanging on his technical there. Technical. Love the detail in it. Very nicely done. Love the base. I have another one made by the same company here of Barbosa. I'm going to show you here in a sec. This is Elizabeth Swan from the Walt Disney Classic Collection. This is a sculpture uh, depicting the scene from the climatic event in uh, the climax in uh, Pirates of the Caribbean Curse of Black Pearl. It's like a porcelain sculpture. Nice base. But yeah. Nice detail. Coming across here, this is the other statue I got from that Japanese company that I can't think of that made the Davy Jones I just showed you. This is Undead Barbosa with Jack the Monkey. He's, he was kind of hard to find as well. Got him from uh, via Amazon from California, a store in California. They had one left. It's pretty expensive. He comes with a uh, another head sculpt of Barbosa in his lifelike form, Jeffrey Rush look, but I like the undead look better. And there's his uh, arm be exposed to the moonlight that shows his true form. If you remember the movie, remember Barbosa's explaining to Elizabeth Swan how they became what they became. Nice detail on base. These are little gold pieces that I got from that eBay seller of the Pirates of the Caribbean collector. He sent me a couple of these. I just think they make good bookies. It was nice of him. He just threw them in the package, but I'm just using with little gold piece trinkets there for the base. Just thought it had nice, adds a nice little touch. Here is Will Turner, Walt Disney Classic Collection, where he sluts his hand and uh, so Jack Sparrow can shoot Barbosa while he puts the cursed Aztec gold back in the chest. Nice base. Got this on eBay from an auction. It's my first auction I ever won. So I got him for a good deal. And again, it's a sculpture. It's kind of like a porcelain sculpture. All of these are. The Walt Disney Classic Collection sculptures are kind of like porcelain. Great bases, though. Love the base. Love the chest. Everything about them. Okay, getting on the ground here. Pardon the camera. <clears throat> here is a what they call a big fig of the auctioneer from Pirates of the Caribbean Attraction. Uh, got one on eBay for about uh, a little less of 400, maybe 375, something like that. He stands about 30 inches tall. Uh, they also sold, they, you could also get the Wicked Wench, the redhead. But she's not really a pirate, and I didn't really want her. But I wanted him. He's got nice detail to him. Yeah, I think he's probably going to be worth a little more now, if you look for him. Because now, as you know, they've taken the auctioneer out of the ride. But yeah, that's him. 
nice detail. Okay, we're right across here. This is a Parts of the Caribbean at World's End desk statue. Just thought it was cute, got it at Disney Store during the release of At World's End. Nice detail. This is Walt Disney Classic Collection sculptures of Barbosa and Jack Sparrow during their climatic scene of their battle of the Curse of the Black Pearl. And as you can see, Barbosa's arm there is exposed to the moonlight and it shows his true form. But yeah, nice piece. Nice, both of them are nice pieces. All four of them are nice pieces. Bases are really detailed, nice. Wish I could show you more guys, but yeah, I'm not gonna take them out, but I'll try to get a good shot of his face here a little bit. Jack Sparrow and Barbosa. Nice detail. Okay, this is a pin that I also got from Disney World. It's the Jolly Roger from Dead Man Tell No Tales. I broke the pin off in this one so I could lay it flat and glue it to the uh, bookcase here. But it made a good centerpiece. I just like the way it looked. This is a Davy Jones, dead Davy Jones chest uh, replica of it that I bought at Best Buy of all places. <laughs> Uh, it has all the uh, Pirate of the Caribbean films in there. Um, I just thought it had great detail to it. I thought it would be a nice addition to the bookcase. I thought the detail and the color was really nice. This is a small little bobblehead that I got at Disney World. Um, I actually got it at the gift shop at the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction. So as soon as you get off the ride, Pirates of the Caribbean... Uh, there's that gift store at Disney World there right after you get off the ride, and that's where I got them. But yeah, it's a nice little bobble head. These are Funko Pop vinyl figures. I'm sure some, even some of you may have heard of them. But it's Jack Sparrow and uh, Undead Barbosa with Undead Jack the Monkey, Davy Jones, and Ghostly Captain Salazar those are. This is a Jolly Roger that I got at Walmart. Parts of the Caribbean Jolly Roger. Glows in the dark. I got it at Walmart for five bucks. <laughs> you know, every Pirates of the Caribbean collection has to have a Jolly Roger. And he's actually pretty cool when you when he glows in the dark, but I'm not using it for that now. I'm just using it on top of a bookcase. But yeah, five bucks, you can't beat that. And I think he looks pretty cool. So nice little touch to it, I thought. This is a Pirates of the Caribbean snow globe of sorts, released, I got it at Disney Store, that was during the release of At World's End. It's actually Sal Fang's ship in the globe there, and instead, you could probably see him a little bit, instead of having white flakes in the globe, there's actually gold flakes, so when you turn the key to, twist the key to turn it on, it plays um, Yo Ho Yo Ho Pirates Life for Me. And the key, it's got nice detail to it. Just thought it was really neat. And to access the key, you got to press the Jolly Roger. That shows the key. Nice little hidden compartment there. Here's the key that you turn in the back to turn the thing on. That's what that is. Okay, pardon the camera. Getting up. <sighs> These are... Uh, Disney Store... Pirates of the Caribbean, they call them figures, but they're 17 inches tall, and they talk. The batteries are long dead. You know, the batteries have stopped working. You can't replace them, so they don't work. The talking feature doesn't work, but it's okay, because it was kind of a mumbled sound. But for figures, they're very uh, tall and very detailed. Again, they're about 17 inches tall. Got it at the Disney store. There's Jack Sparrow, and there's Davy Jones. And again, I got these while Dead Man's Chest was released in theaters. They were about 50 bucks each. So for a figure, they're pretty expensive. Um, this is Bootstrap Bill Turner, a figure from NECA, made by NECA. Very detailed. Comes with a nice detailed base, and there's Davies Jones' chest. Why they included Davies Jones' chest with Bootstrap Bill, I don't know. I guess it's because he's gardening. 
but it's a nice little figure. Lowering myself here. These are some crewmen of Davy Jones's crew. That's Maccus, M-A-C-C-U-S on the left, Memphisito in the middle, and Clanker on the right. They're made by NECA. Just want to just give you a close-up of what they look like there. I especially like Clanker. Just think the detail's pretty cool. Nice base. There's Memphisito. And there's Maccus. Okay. Moving right along over here. These are a little bit better quality and bigger bobbleheads that I got at Disney World, Pirates of the Caribbean Attraction Ride gift store. This is one of Davy Jones. Nice detailed, a little bit more detailed than the uh, Jack Sparrow uh, Cannibal King bobblehead I just showed you. A lot more detail to it. These were released during Dead Man's Chest while Dead Man's Chest was in theaters. Had a lot of Dead Man's Chest merchandise at Disney World then. And I saw these two and I picked them up. I think they were like 15 bucks each. Yeah, pretty cool. This is a, it's made by a company called Master Replicas. And it's their license through Disney. But it, basically what it is, it's a resin statue with uh, a nice base. And sketches and pictures and art of the character that they're portraying. Or displaying, I should say. And in this case, this is Davy Jones. They made three. They made a Davy Jones, a Barbosa, and a Jack Sparrow. I got Davy Jones and Barbosa because I figured I had enough Jack. I mean, you got you can never have enough Jack, <laughs> Jim or <laughs> Johnny. Um, sorry, that's not all joke. But uh, yeah, he's very nicely detailed. Nice base, as I said. They're licensed through Disney, as I said, but. Uh, yeah, there's the art, little pictures of the art and photos from the film. Really cool. Nice technical on the top of the base there. Gives a nice look. And here's, I'm getting on my knee, so sorry. Uh, here's the Barbosa one. Again, it's by made by a company called Master Replicas. Barbosa, for some reason, was more expensive than Davy Jones and Jack Sparrow. I guess it's because they don't make a lot of Barbosa-related re merchandise. They make a lot of Jack Sparrow and Davy Jones, but not so much Barbosa for some reason. Nicely detailed, nice base. Got all the jewelry there on the base there. Artist sketches and art. Pictures from the film of the character. But yeah, that's what that is. Getting down even lower. Excuse me. These are Bradford Exchange sculptures of a line that they introduced called Parts of the Caribbean Scoundrels and Rogues. They made a Will Turner, but I did not like Will Turner. I didn't think he was that great. And for the price, I just did. They're about 80 bucks each. But I got Davy Jones. The detail's really nice. He kind of sparkles there. He kind of shines there. Look at the detail on that. But, yeah, the detail is very cool. And it has a little picture of David Jones and Calypso. He had Dalma there in the back. But yeah, I just love this nice piece. And here's the one of Jack Sparrow with Jack the Monkey. A little picture of the back on the flag, but a cobweb. Sorry for the cobwebs, guys. Kind of hard to find sometimes. Kind of hard to see. Nice base. Yeah. These are a collection collection set made by NECA. Uh, it depicts a scene where Barbosa finds out that Jack Sparrow is undead himself. Because if you remember in the film, The Curse of the Black Pearl, he steals one of the cursed Aztec gold during the climatic scene. Right from under Barbosa. But uh, here's Jack Sparrow. And there's Barbosa's end of Barbosa's sword in Jack Sparrow's chest. If you remember that he stabs him in the chest right before. And that's when he realized he was not. He was an undead. But yeah, 
detail's really nice. Again, it's made by NECA. The base is interlocked there, as you can see. Let's make one nice set. And there's Jack's rum. He's got to have his rum. There's the cursed chest of Cortez himself. Not of Cortez, but there's his cursed gold. Love the base. Um, it scratches on top of the lid there. It's like a gold foam of gold coins. Really nice detail. Loved it how they did that. Treasure chest. And here's Barbosa. With undead Jack the Monkey. Yeah, that's what that is. Okay. Getting up. Not quite done with the parts Caribbean stuff yet, guys. Oh, forgot two more things to show you. Here's a Jim Shore piece, another Jim Shore piece sculpture of the jail scene from the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction. Nice detail. Um, here is a Disney D23 Expo um, when uh, 50th anniversary. When Pirates of the Caribbean attraction turned 50 years old, they had an expo called D23, and to celebrate it, they released uh, exclusive merchandise and sculptures for the event, and this was one of those items. It depicts the drunk in the uh, attraction with all the pigs around him. Can't remember the sculptor's name, but he's a Disney sculptor. That's really cool. Base is heavier, is heavier than it looks. It's a heavy piece. That's why he's there. Now we're getting up again. <sighs> Let's take you over here. This is the other Sideshow Collectibles premium format statue that Sideshow Collectibles made of Jack Sparrow. I got this one on Amazon, um, via Amazon. I got it from a store of Great Britain. They had one left. I was very lucky to get this one. They were both, both of these collectibles, uh, Sideshow Collectibles statues, premium format statues are limited and they're hard to find. They've been long out of production, but they're very detailed. There's mom again. <laughs> um, there's a nice base to it. This is actually from On Stranger Tides, Jack Sparrow on Stranger Tides. The first one I showed you was from The Curse of the Black Pearl after the release of The Curse of the Black Pearl. And this one was released after the release of On Stranger Tides. So yeah. This is Patel and Rigetti, or Rigetti and Patel, depending on your preference. Made by NECA. I'll show you a close-up of their faces. Nice detail. Beautiful vases. Love the vases. They, they inter, interlock to make one nice little display. Yeah, that's what that is. This is a Art of Disney Randy Noble sculpture. The artist sculptor's name was Randy Noble. And this was the first depicted, depiction of what the Black Pearl would look like before the Curse of the Black Pearl came out in theaters. No one knew what the Curse of the Black Pearl would look like. So this is a Disney sculpture's Disney sculpture Disney sculptor version of what the Black Pearl would look like. And his again his name was his name is uh, Randy Noble. Pardon the shake in the camera, guys. I'm trying to get it to stop. For some reason, I'm shaking. Yeah, that's what that is. Moving right along. Okay, a little backstory on this one. Uh, this, there was, Disneyland had an event called Moonlight Brigade, and it was after the release of Curse of Black Pearl, but before the release, it was actually to celebrate the release of Dead Man's Chest. So Dead Man's Chest hadn't came out in theaters yet. So they had this event at Disneyland called Moonlight Brigade. And at the event that you had to get invited to and pay a little extra money for, but uh, you didn't have to be invited to, but you had to pay extra money for it. It might have been sold out, but you got to ride the ride for free. They provided a dinner. And they also gave you first dibs on uh, event-exclusive merchandise for that event. And this was one of them. This is a sculpture of depicting uh, the scene during the climatic scene of The Curse of the Black Pearl where the uh, undead pirates Barbosa's crew walks underwater to get to the Black Pearl. 
and the water is made out of glass. It's beautiful glass. Um, it does glow in the dark there. When you, there's a switch on the bottom that you turn on and it gives off this very cool, eerie, neon blue light. And in the dark, it does, it looks like ghostly water. It looks like undead water. It's very cool. Very cool look. I'm sorry I can't show you guys because it's, it's a little heavy and I really can't do it with one hand, but it's nice detail. And here's the black pearl. Very fragile, but very cool. Okay. Here is one of many I'm going to show you here later of Hot Toys. This is a Hot Toys Jack Sparrow from the movie Dead Man Tell No Tales. And if you look on his face, you know, if he's gotten older. You know, Jack Sparrow, Johnny Depp, they've gotten older. He's a little more plumpier in Dead Man Tell No Tales. So Hot Toys is known for their detail. They're stricter, they're very strict on detail, and they're also known for their expense. Because he was about 400 bucks easy. Not sure how much he's going for now, but there's the tattoos on his finger. If you remember from the film, Dead Man Tell No Tales. This is bottle of rum. Jack has to have his rum. There's the, there's the bottle with the black pearl in it. I don't know if you can see it or not, but yeah, that's got the black pearl in there. And here's the undead shark. Or the, I guess he's a dead shark, but ghostly shark. I don't know what you want to call him. From the film. I'll put Jack Sparrow's hat in there because I thought it would be a good comedic look to him. <laughs> I just thought it was funny. But it's pretty cool. There's a print of the one sign that you see in the film. It says exactly what the one sign said in the film. So it's very, again, they're known for their detail. It's canon. Nice look. And it's on the water. It's a nice nameplate. Pirate Scribbian, Dead Man Tell No Tales. And these are the colors that Jack Sparrow flies. His official colors. And he sails when he, he flies when he sails in this black pearl. Yeah, that's again, that's made by Hot Toys. Here is another Hot Toys release. This is Davy Jones from At World's End during the release of At World's End. Easily the most expensive Hot Toys Pirates of the Caribbean releases. They've released several Pirates of the Caribbean um, figures Hot Toys has. Easily the most expensive one, easily the uh, hardest one to find. Uh, I've seen them go, go as high as 1500. I bought them 600 used. You can still find them on eBay, but you know, a lot of people are selling them now. And they're not bad prices, really. I just saw some this morning. Not bad. But I love the detail on it. It kind of gives off that waterly look, like that wet look. I don't know how they did it, but it's not the glass you're seeing. It's just kind of a water look to the, like a shine. I'm not sure how he did it, but there's the, uh, his pipe. And his keys are right there to his left on the technical there. Little brown keys. There's his uh, base, his stand, Pirates of Caribbean, Davy Jones, World's End, and there's his chest with his heart in it. So yeah, and there's a cane. I don't remember Davy Jones walking with a cane in any of the films, but Hot Toys decided to give him a cane look on that one, which I like, so it's cool. It's fine. Okay, here are some Hot Toys Jack Sparrows. This is from On Stranger Tides. There's his elevated telescope, if you remember from the film. There's the black pearl in a little bottle. I did have him behind the wheel, manning the wheel like a captain, but it held it hid too much of his detail, and I really liked him. And there's his face, and as you can see, compared to the Dead Men Tell No Tales, it's a lot different than the one that I just showed you because Jack Sparrow or Johnny Depp looked different back then. So Hot Toys is known for its detail. Love the detail. And there's his rum. He's got to have his rum. He's saying, hey, cheers. You know, <laughs> there's the wheel behind him there, if you could tell. That's a great base. Love the wheel behind him. And there's his colors. And here is J. 
Jack Sparrow Hot Toys when he was the Cannibal King, when the uh, tribe made him into their chief. And they were going to sacrifice him to the gods by eating him. If you remember that from Dead Man's Chest, there's his skull there and top of his hat. Nice detail. Even got the toe necklace that he had on in the film, that he chewed on also in the film. That was a pretty funny part. But yeah, Jack Sparrow Cannibal King. And, you know, Jack Sparrow, Hot Toys, about 400. Davy Jones was a lot more, and he was used. <laughs> but yeah, easily, easily the most expensive one was Davy Jones. Okay, I think that's all the Pirates of the Caribbean stuff. No, it is not. Let me show you something. I just saw something here. This is a NECA figure of Teodalma, or otherwise known as Calypso. Nice detail, nice color. Jar of eyes there on the base. And here is one of Sal Fang. Again, made by NECA, just like Teodalma. Nice detail. He's got the tattoo on the side of his head. All around of his head. Yeah, very detailed look. Okay, now I think that's all the Pirate Scribbin stuff I got to show you. Hope I didn't forget anything. So now let's start with the Tim Burton uh, related films and characters and stuff. I want to take you over here. Oh, actually, see one more Pirates of the Caribbean thing I got to show you. See, I just forget this stuff, but this is a map to the root, to the Father's Gate, as said by Sal Fang. And at World's End, but this is the map that Barbosa and Will Turner and Elizabeth Swan seek from Sal Fang. And at World's End to go to Davy Jones' locker to retrieve Jack Sparrow to save them from Lord Cutler Beckett. Nice detail. It's a canvas print. Canvas wrap print, I should say. Of the map. Do you see the hidden Mickey? There's the hidden Mickey right there, right below the tiger. And do you see the hidden Elizabeth Swan and Jack Sparrow? There they are, right there. But yeah, that's what that is. Pretty cool. All right. Start with some Tim Burton stuff. This is a portrait, a uh, picture of the Mad Hatter that I got at the Art of Disney at Disney World. Put a nice frame. I love the pose. I just think the pose is pretty cool. But yeah, that's what that is. This is a photo still of Corpse Bride. I got it on eBay for about ten bucks. I'll show you. I'll show you a few more here later. I got a few more. They're eight by eights, and like I said, they were about ten bucks, so they weren't too bad, too expensive at all. Here's some original posters, twenty-seven by forty, all of them, of some Tim Burton films. There's Sleepy Hollow. Love that poster. I think this that's got a cool look to it. And there's Corpse Bride, right there. And I'll take you one more time. This is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. These are all original, 27 by 40. You can still find them, they're not too bad. They're anywhere between, again, anywhere between 50 and 100 bucks. And I'll show you, since we're on posters here, it's Tim Burton's The Night, Tim Burton's The Night Before Christmas. That's an original. That was closer to 100, because it's an original. Uh, there is Alice in Wonderland's poster. That is a stand-up that my wife got me from Blockbuster. They were going to throw that away in a dumpster, and my wife called me and said, you want me to get this for you? They're throwing it away. I said, yeah, grab it. Why would you throw that away? So I got that for free. It's awesome. Here's Sweeney Todd. Demon Barber Fleet Street there. All original. And an original poster of Dark Shadows. I love that film. Every time I see it, I like it a little bit more. Okay, going back to the wall here. This was a canvas wrap portrait of the Corpse Bride characters. I got on eBay from a 
eBay seller in Japan. It's got it's an oddly dimensioned uh, canvas wrap, so you had to customize a frame for it. And if you know anything about frames, when you customize them, they can be pretty expensive. So this had this nice mother of a lady, this lady who's the mother of two friends and co-workers of mine, Jen and Joe Thomas, who made this for me and did such a great job. She painted it, so she made me that frame. But yeah, that's what that is. Such a nice lady. And I'll show you what else she made me. She made these for my birthday. Came to my work and um, surprised me with it for my birthday. Don't know the lady at all. Never met her before until, and she, you know, this just shows you that generous people are out there kind, generous people. She didn't know me anything. I didn't know her. But she made that for me for my birthday. I just thought that was so sweet of her. And it is sweet of her. Amazing woman. She made that. She painted that. That's the first painting that she's ever done of a Tim Burton character. She just got an image off the internet, and took it off that, but painted that. And I love what she did to it. It's so well done. That's the first attempt at a painting of a Tim Burton character she's ever done. She said I needed an Edward Scissorhands and she was right. Such a generous woman. This is a Bradford Exchange Nightmare for Christmas Cuckoo Clock and if you're it does work and um, the batteries are dead and I'm not replacing them because if you remember earlier what I told you about the batteries and these clocks it's not a good idea but zero comes out of there and it does play uh, what's this? actual song from the film. But yep, that's what that is. And the reason why they're so fragile, the reason why I know this for a fact, is because when I was replacing the batteries, you know, Sally's hand just broke right off. You can see the crack right there. And I got an instant bonder, so it fixed it fine. But still, again, they're more wall art. That Yes, they are functioning cuckoo clocks. Even the cat's ear broke off. Forgot about that part. But it's okay, it kind of fits with the theme. And so does the broken wrist, because, you know, they're dead. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, if you get one of these Bradford clocks, just be careful. They're very fragile. Kind of hard to get the batteries in to begin with. And it's just, you're playing, you're risking breaking it. But it's a nice piece. Okay, going on top here. This is a crystal box of Corpse Bride of the Picture. And that hand is supposed to be a replica of Emily's hand with the ring on it. I don't know. I got it from an eBay seller that I bought a, uh, st a sculpture from. And he threw this in there as an extra. It was nice of him. And I just thought it was kind of cute, so I put it up on the shelf there. These are Todd McFarlane minifigures of Corpse Bride. They're Scraps, Victor, and Victoria. This is a Jack Skeleton candle holder that my wife got me. For my birthday at the Disney store. These are Todd McFarlane minifigures of Emily, Corpse Bride, and her friends Maggot and Widow. That is a Bradford Exchange musical sculpture that plays We Were Simply Meant to Be. It's a nice sculpture and it plays a song real well. The audio is really nice. It comes out real clear. But yeah, that's what that is. Moving right along. Here's some more Todd McFarlane minifigures. Pastor Galswell, Gaswell, and the Corpse Bride Dead Kids. <laughs> That's the only way I can think of what to call them, because they are dead. Very dead in that. <laughs> this is a Todd McFarlane di diorama of Sleepy Hollow, the Headless Horseman. A nice base, love the tree. That's the tree that he rides into and from out of when he comes out. But I love the uh, detail of the horse. I can't remember the horse's name. Was it Lightning? I can't remember what his name was. The horse's name. But I uh, love the detail of the horse and the headless horseman, horseman itself. A lot of cool detail. Love the cape. Again, this is Todd McFarlane. Diorama. Nice eerie base. Here's some more Todd McFarlane minifigures of Corpse Bride. Those are Victor's parents, if you recall. 
Here are Lord Barkus and the Bone Man, as I call him. Uh, Todd McFarlane, many, many figures. This is an Oogie Boogie candy dish that was sold at the Disney store years ago. Got it on eBay from a seller. Kind of hard to find. You don't really find them, see them around much. Amazon or eBay. So if you see one, grab it. But it's, it, I just thought it was so cool looking. Thought it'd make a good piece for the bookcase here. Here is minifigures of, Todd McFarlane minifigures of Victoria's parents, and that's probably my favorite character in the whole film, her dad, because he has fine lines in it. Well, hello, such a pleasure. What to welcome to our home? There's an eye in me soup. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I love, I love those two characters in the film. Okay, moving, sitting down on the ground here, guys. Pardon the camera. Let me give you a little backstory on these. Okay, so, now when Nightmare Before Christmas came out, June Planning, which is a company that came, is based out of Japan, made what they call collection dolls of Nightmare Before Christmas, when Nightmare Before Christmas came out. And it was so well received, and Tim Burton loved him so much, that he personally requested uh, June Planning to do the collection dolls for Corpse Bride. And June Planning released uh, dolls, these dolls, for the Japanese market. And they released a collection dolls, Corpse Bride collection dolls, for the American market. And there are differences. And I'll show them to you here in a second. But these are the Japanese uh, release, Japanese version, collection dolls of Corpse Bride. Here's Victor. And you can see his face expression, which is important to remember, because I'll show you Victor's face expression. The American release is much different. He has a surprise look. And there's scraps in the box that he pops out of. It depicts, this collection depicts the scene of when Emily gives Victor uh, the package that has scraps in it in the film, if you remember in the film. So that's what it's depicting. They're sold separately, uh, but they do, they make a set. They make a set. So that's how they get you. But that's scraps in the box. And Victor comes with scraps in the box, the Japanese version. And this is Emily, beautiful Emily. She's got a nice little smile on her face. And she comes with the bench. And that's a replica of what the bench was in the film. The grain on it is really cool. It's just plastic. You have to build it, you have to put it together, but it's just plastic. It looks like real wood almost, but it's plastic. But it's just really nicely done, very detailed. There's Emily. And again, she comes with the bench. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Victor was, Victor I got a, a steal from an eBay seller. He couldn't be, he, he sold it used. So I got it for less than 400, but he goes now for seven on eBay. I haven't found a listing on Amazon. So they're, they're both limited, they're both hard to find. If you see them, if you want them, grab them, but be prepared to pay it probably a pretty penny. Um, Emily, was the cheapest I've seen her was 1500 and that's what I paid for her. I worked uh, 85 hours in one week, 45 hours of overtime just to get her. And she comes to the bench. Um, Amazon wants 1800 and there's one listing for her. Uh, but the cheapest I saw was on eBay, a couple listings of her for uh, $1,500 each. She's extremely expensive. But worth it if you can get the two together, if you can get the set together. Uh, for To get Victor, I worked uh, 65 hours in one week, 25 hours of overtime to get him. And then two weeks later, I worked 85 hours to get Emily. I was almost dead. <laughs> I was almost dead. I almost died. But, uh, <laughs> God, 12 hours, like seven 12-hour shifts just to get Emily. And, you know, just it's just unreal. It was just uncanny. But, um, yeah, that's what those are. I'll show you the American version here in a minute. Here is a June Planning Collection doll of Elder Gutschnick. Gutschnick. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. But believe it or not, it is a collection doll. It doesn't look like it, does it? As Sarah calls him, that's Bone Man. <laughs> hey, Sarah. But, yeah, he's pretty detailed. He's very fragile, as you can probably guess. He's got that piece of plastic that's holding his head up. 
otherwise that head would be coming down. Comes with a nice little plain base, but I'm glad it came with a base because he needed it. He can't stand without a base. Yeah, that's what that is. Okay, let's move on top here. Show you what's up here. This is a Sweeney Todd figure. It's 12 inches from a company called Mediacom. And he's really cool, very nicely detailed. Love this clothes, love his look. Comes with a clear base. Mediacom figures come with clear bases and I love them. Because I think color bases kind of take away from the statue that you're, or the figure that you're trying to display. But clear bases don't, they give that invisible look. You almost don't know that they're there. I'll give you a close up of Sweeney Todd's face. And the cobweb that's from his hair to his shell, to his shoulder apparently. Gotta clean this stuff. But yeah, that's what that is. Here are the American versions of June Plang's collection dolls, Victor and Corpse Bray. As you can see, the face expressions are different than the Japanese versions I just showed you. The American version of Emily, Corpse Bride, comes with a bouquet. The Japanese version does not come with a bouquet. You get the bench. So that's the difference between the Japanese and the American version of Emily. Virtually, it's, it's still the same doll, same dress, uh, same dimensions. Emily's 16 inches tall and Victor's 17 inches tall. That's all the same, just the face expressions are different. And uh, the Japanese version comes with stuff that the American version doesn't. Neither of these American version dolls came with bases. Um, the Japanese versions did. Victor came with nothing. The American version of Victor here came, comes with nothing, just himself. The Japanese version of Victor comes with scraps and the box and the standing base, like I said. So there are differences. And the Japanese versions are a little more expensive than the American versions, but the American versions are still expensive. I think I spent 700 on her and about seven or 600 on Victor. Japanese are more, a little bit more expensive than that. But lovely back, lovely back there is the Red Queen from Alice in Wonderland through the Looking Glass. During, through the Looking Glass movie release, Alice in Wonderland through the Looking Glass movie release, it's Disney Store. Disney limited her to 5,000 pieces, I believe. So she is limited, but there's quite a few out there, still 5,000. Uh, she's 18 inches tall, comes with her own base. Saw the Disney store and I was like, yep, gotta have her. Because if Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland, the first Tim Burton Alice in Wonderland film, they didn't release a lot of uh, Alice in Wonderland statues or figures or dolls. She was actually a doll. Yeah, it comes with her own base. I hope you can get enough of her detail there. Nice boots. There's her wand there that she carries. Nicely done. She's beautiful. Okay. Show you some more over here across. These are Nightmare for Christmas bookends that I got from an eBay seller who bought them at Disney World years ago. But yeah, they're bookends. There's the mayor and Sally in a driver's seat. Those are some uh, Tim Burton film books of Dark Shadows, Alice in Wonderland, Sweeney Todd, Night Before Christmas, and Corpse Bride. How they made the film and all that photos. A little bit about the cast. Pretty cool. Um, here is my one and only piece for Frank and Weenie. I like Frank and Weenie. It's a cute film. Don't get me wrong, and I know how much it meant to Tim Burton. But, you know, it's not one of my favorites. But I wanted a piece from that film. I didn't want to buy several collect collectibles from that film because, again, it wasn't one of my favorites. It was cute. It was nice. But uh, his eyes do light up in the dark. There's a switch on the bottom that you turn on. His lights, his eyes light up. But I thought it's pretty detailed. He's Disney Store. Got him from the Disney Store. This is a Ultra Detail. That's the name of the company. And he is Ultra Detailed of the Mad Hatter. And I really liked how he looked, so I bought him. I got it on eBay for, oh, he wasn't much, about 15 bucks. I think he's about eight inches tall, maybe seven. But he's got a lot of cool detail to him. And that's uh, the Mad Hatter from Alice in Wonderland, Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland. Here is Christopher Walken. And his portrayal is a headless horseman, but he has his head. 
It, you could take the head off and make him headless, but I already have a headless horse on the bookcase, the diorama, so I wanted Christopher Walken's face on here. Because any good uh, Tim Burton collector is going to have Christopher Walken in, his collect in a collection. Because Christopher Walken rocks. Love Christopher Walken. Love the teeth. This is Todd McFarlane. There's some friends <laughs> that he met. Uh, pretty, pretty dark figure if you think about it, but very cool detail. Okay, here is a yard sculpture. This is a yard sculpture of Lock, Shock, and Barrel from Nightmare Before Christmas. And I was thinking I'm not putting that in my yard because any Tim Burton fan would see that in the yard and he would snatch it as I wouldn't blame him. So he looks just as good in the house as he would in the yard. But this is where you put the key for the house. A little hidden compartment. It's not very hidden. Anyone could tell you could lift that. I don't know what that was in there. But, uh, yeah, that's what that was. Or I should say that's what that is. Moving right along. This is a Jack Skeleton sculpture. Uh, Art of Disney at Disney World. Got from an eBay seller. He's about 200 You could still find them. Maybe even for less... There seems to be quite a few of these out. Snowflake glows in the dark. You don't have to turn a switch on, it just glows in the dark. If it's exposed to light long enough, it'll just glow in the dark. Yeah, nice detail, nice face. Here is Mediacom's Sleepy Hollow, Ichabod Crane, played by Johnny Depp. Nice head sculpt, but you gotta put the glasses on there because I like that neo futuristic look. Nice detail. Comes with the base, but he doesn't need it. He's standing fine. He's never fail. So he stands perfectly fine without the base. Okay, moving on the background here. That is another yard sculpture of Sally and Dr. Finkelstein from Nightmare Before Christmas that I am not putting in my yard. Somewhere is a hidden compartment. It's probably the brain there. Haven't tried it. Haven't tested it. Don't care. Like the look, though. Very detailed. That is Johnny Depp's portrayal of Willy Wonka in Tim Burton's Charlie and Chocolate Factory. It's made by NECA. He's 18 inches tall. Nice detail, nice face sculpt. Uh, can't stand worth a shit. <laughs> Which is why he's leaning against Sally and Dr. Finkelstein here. Because he falls over. And uh, he can't stand. And he comes with his own staff there. Nice tall figure. Okay, I'm going to stand up, guys. Pardon me. Now, any good Tim Burton fans will know who these two are. This is Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman and Danny DeVito's Penguin in Batman Returns. These were both made by NECA. Uh, Danny DeVito was about, or Penguin was about 200. But I love the face sculpt of them. Just thought it nailed it. Love the teeth. There's another uh, earlier release of the penguin from Batman Returns, but he's kind of like has a doesn't come with a coat and he kind of has like a um, shocked look to him. I just didn't like the look of the head sculpt. I like this one better. Plus, this one came with a coat and the other one didn't. He comes in his jammies there. He's very bottom heavy. He's got a gut on him. Thing was falling over all the time. So I had to land him against the wall here so he wouldn't fall. And there's his half eaten fish in one hand. And, or claw, I should say. And there's a cigarette in his other claw. But yeah, I love that one. And here's Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. She comes with a, another head sculpt. The battle one where her blonde hair is sticking out and she's got a screech look to her like she's screaming. Pretty intense, but I like this look better. It's more classic. Looks so much like Michelle Pfeiffer to me. Love the look. You can tell in her costume there that she's been through battle. It's got holes and stitches scrapes in there um she's leaning against the wall because she's got high heels for feet she comes with a stand but it don't it doesn't do any good she falls over all the time she can't stand and i found out she can't even lean against the wall without sliding because those pointy little heels just aren't good for standing so gotta lean it up against a wall and got some tape on her back and put the back up against the wall so it sticks so she doesn't move <laughs> There's her taser there on the side of her leg. It comes off. Has the cat woman symbol on it. 
That is a wire whip. That's her whip, but it is made out of wire, and you could pose it in midair. And maybe one day I'll pose her, and because you can really make some cool poses with her. And maybe one day I'll pose her, but uh, right now I'm just leaving her there. Okay, let's go to the bottom here. Ugh. Pardon me. We're gonna do this. Here is a sculpture of Victor, made by a company called Gentle Giant based out of Japan, and he's depicting the scene where he's trying to remember his lines, his vows to Victoria in the woods, and as he's placing the ring on the branch that he was just pretending was someone's finger, it actually was Emily rising out of the ground that he put the ring on. It scares him to death. That's a diorama. So these two are kind of like go hand in hand. These scenes go in hand. There he is putting the ring on a branch, and then Emily rises up from the ground and scares Victor so much that he grabs her hand and breaks it right off. But it's a pretty cool scene. These were both made by Gentle Giant. Here is a Hot Topic Mayor car that I got. You can still find them on eBay. Uh, they're gold a little bit more expensive on eBay because those sellers like to charge it up, but they also do demand. So there's a lot of Nightmare for Christmas collectors out there. Uh, but I spent maybe, Hot Topic, maybe 50 bucks, but I've seen them on eBay for 200. I don't think uh, Hot Topic carries it anymore. That's probably why they're charging so much because they're kind of hard to find. Uh, here's a Barnes & Noble mare figure that I thought would good, look good with the uh, Hot Topic mare car. And it does, it looks like the right scale. Uh, I even tried to put him in there behind the wheel, but he doesn't look right, so he's standing next to it. Those are jack heads, interchangeable heads, that if you bought the Bradford Exchange jack skeleton sculpture, they come with these interchangeable heads, and each sculpture that you buy of the Nightmare Before Christmas sculpture characters from Bradford Exchange, they each come with a different head, but I never bought the jack skeleton head sculpture, but I got these two heads from... Two different uh, sculptures that I bought from back Bradford Exchange from two different characters I'll show you here in a minute. Those what those jackets are, and I just thought they looked good there on the bookcase, kind of a front and end for the mayor car there. Here is a Bradford Exchange uh, musical carousel, Nightmare Before Christmas. It plays, uh, what's this? but it has all the Nightmare for Christmas characters on it. And if you looked on the other side, it would have Oogie Boogie and other characters on there, but it's pretty detailed. It's nice, sounds good. Here are the Bradford Exchange the sculptures I was telling you about just a minute ago. There's the mayor, and it came with a jackhead, and there's Dr. Finkelstein that also came with a jackhead. But uh, that's what those two are. Jack Skeleton and Zero in the middle there are, I got from World of Disney store um, in uh, downtown Disney, you know, Walt Disney World. I think you could still find them, if not online. Seem to be quite a number of them out there. I don't think they're limited, so they're pretty easy to find. They're not too expensive. I think I spent 75 bucks on them. Okay, moving along, along the bottom here. Okay, so Disney had these big figs, Nightmare Before Christmas big figs that you can only get at auction behind the scenes at Disney or Disneyland. They only made so many of these. You know, I think each of them that came with 300, limited edition to 300. Uh, I think Jack and Sally, who I'll show you, to, who I'll show you in a minute here, uh, I think were 250, limited to 250. These are long out of production, long been sold out. But you see them on eBay pop up every now and then. They're, they're expensive, they're big, they're heavy, and the hardest thing about these, other than the expense, is uh, finding a shipper that'll ship it. Because I said the shipping on these are no notorious, I and mean, they're just awful. It's crazy expensive. But they're awesome. They're detailed. They're called Big Figs. Mare's about 27 inches tall with the hat there. The thing I like about the mare is that his head is move, uh, moves to the other side. It shows you his other side that he does in the film. But yeah, you could swivel his head around, which is, you should be able to swivel his head because, you know, in the film, he hung himself. Not in the film, but 
That's his backstory. That's the reason why he's dead is because he hung himself. I don't know why I told you that, but okay. Here is a June planning collection doll of Pastor Gaswell, Christopher Lee's character. You got to have Christopher Lee in your collection, Tim Burton collection in some way. He's 20, uh, 23 inches tall with the top of his hat. Very fragile. His head was actually uh, undone from the body. I had to put his head on. Uh, that's the way it shipped because the box was pretty big. Had to take his hands off, that one in particular, to put his staff and to insert his staff into the hole of the hand there. So fragile, so easy to break. Oh my God, I was so stressed out. I mean, the nose alone, look at that nose. That thing will break. <laughs> it's long and it's just fragile. They're so fragile. Can't express to you enough how fragile they are. Pretty cool, pretty cool detail. Legs are real long and super thin. I thought they moved, so I was trying to move his legs a little bit, separate them a bit, and I found out real quick, nope, they don't move, because I heard a little crack. I was like, no, don't move them, leave them alone. But he's okay. And thankfully he came with that stand, because he needs it, because he can't stand with the shit without it. Okay, here is a big fig of Oogie Boogie. And there's... Um, Shock there in the front and lock and barrel in the back. A cool little story about this one, how I got this one. Uh, there was a guy that bidded on a storage unit. And, he, you know, you get to see what the contents are in a storage unit. You, you get to glaze over it. And then you bid on it. You don't know what the items are in the storage unit. They're usually boxed up. He bid it on it and he won. And this was one of the contents in the storage unit. And he had no desire for it. He did, he's not a Tim Burton fan. He just had no desire for it. Didn't need it, nothing. Listed on eBay for a great price. Great price. Uh, $400. Yes, I know it's still $400, Clay. I understand. It's still expensive. But he's easily going for $900. And he's limited and he's very hard to find. Last time I saw a listing of him, he was $900. Amazon doesn't have a listing for him at all. Very hard to find. So I was very fortunate to get him. Just saw it one night, listed, and I was like, bam. Pick it up. Okay, I think that's it on the bookcase here. One last thing. These are little simple little decals I got at a Halloween store last Halloween. They stick to the bookcase here. I just thought they were pretty cool. I put them around the bookcase here. Just thought I'd show you that a little bit. And you got zero here. Here's zero. Okay, standing up. Pardon me. I'm going to show you some hot toys, other hot toys that's not Tim Burton related. Some that are, some aren't. Here's one that is not, obviously. This is Heath Ledger's Joker. Uh, comes to the desk. He's about 600. Wasn't cheap. Comes with another head sculpt where he's laughing, but I like this head sculpt better because you see more of Heath Ledger. Even has the blade coming out of his shoe. Right there. But yeah, that's what that is. Here is Jack Nicholson's Joker from Tim Burton's Batman. Looks so much like Jack Nicholson. I just love the look of him. I'm not going to open the glass, guys. I'm sorry, because if I open the glass, a lot of things are going to fall. <laughs> Some of these don't have bases, and things fall. And tends to have a domino chain reaction effect that usually isn't good. <laughs> <clears throat> Here is a Hot Toys. Oh, Jack the Jack Nicholson Jokers were Hot Toys, in case I didn't say it, and Heath Ledger's. Joker is the Hot Toys, but here's the Hot Toys, Angelina Jolie's Maleficent. Saw this, love the, the face. She comes with different hands, uh, have hand gestures. She comes with these green flames, so she can like stretch out both her arms and show these green flames coming out of her hand, the palms of her hand, which I thought was a really cool effect. Really cool and really neat look. But I like the look of where her holding her staff with the raven on top. Love the black dress. Just beautiful. Got it wrapped around. Here is a Disney store uh, Red Queen from Through the Looking Glass doll. She's about 12 inches. The other one I showed you again was 18. She's more of a collector doll. This is Hot Toys Ghost Rider. Actually came with a sculpt, a head sculpt of Nicolas Cage, and I was like, I'm not putting Nicolas Cage's head on Ghost Rider. You gotta go with the classic skull look. Come on. It's Ghost Rider, not Nicolas Cage Rider. 
But yeah, nice detail, especially in the bike. The bike has beautiful detail. He was about six, 600 bucks because of the detail and it's pretty big. Just barely fits in the display case. As you can see, he just fit. The flames do light up. Uh, I just didn't put a battery in there because I like the flames the way they are, but the flames do glow, including the flame on his head. Badass, just love them. Okay, moving to the next glass case here. These are the Mad Hatters. Kind of sounds like I like a musical group, but uh, <laughs> uh, center one is Mad Hatter from Alice in Wonderland through the Looking Glass Disney Store. The two on the ends are Mediacom, Alice in Wonder uh, Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland from Mediacom. Just love the look of the Mad Hatter from through the Looking Glass. Has a Sweeney Todd bass because. Um, he didn't come with a base, and he needs a base because he can't stand with the ship. So I had that extra Sweeney Todd, Hot Toys Sweeney Todd base. But yeah, I really like the Mad Hatter look of the Disney Store version. Here's Mediacom's version of Mad Hatter from Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland. That's his familiar garb that you saw him in the film. Clear base. Love that. Clear base. Gotta love it. Nice detail. Face could be better, but I, I like it. It's okay. It works. And this is the battle suit, or the battle version of Mad, Mad Hatter from Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland, right before Alice and Mad Hatter and the White Queen fight the Jabberwocky and the Red Queen. He's got more intense look on the face, which I actually like a lot. He's wearing a kilt and has a big sword. It was a sword fight with Knave, if you remember. Okay, moving down here. This is Hot Toys, Sweeney Todd. Really cool. Had to build the chair. I don't know why I had to build the chair. It was actually more of a pain in the butt than I thought, but it's Hot Toys. But nice detail. I'm trying, uh, in this pose, I'm trying to recreate the pose from that poster there. And I got it the best I can. But, uh, yep, uh, there's his friends. These are my friends. Several switchblades. Nice little base with a nice faceplate there. Demon Barber Fleet Street. Here's a Medicom version of Charlie and Chocolate Factory. Johnny Depp's Willy Wonka. Tim Burton. Um, I'm not, I wasn't really crazy about the face sculpt, gonna be honest. So, luckily they came with the white goggles. And I put the white goggles on them and now I like them a lot better than the face sculpt. I just don't think they nailed it very well. Everything else I love, the detail of the clothing. Um, I gave them that pose there, clear base. That staff is just holding on to the, his hand, his fingers, but he's not really holding it. But I thought that was a cool little look to him. But yeah, I like them better with the white goggles than without because it just doesn't, it looks freaky. Stupid freaky and I just don't think it looks like him at all. The 18 inch version by, made by NECA is a better sculpt than this one. But with the glasses on, it's okay, it's good. Here's some Hot Toys releases of various figures. Here is Ichabod Crane, Hot Toys Ichabod Crane, Johnny Depp from Sleepy Hollow. Nice detail, comes with some nice props there. There's the book that when he gets shot, he's saved by the book because the bullet goes into the book. And there's actually an imprint of the bullet in that book. So again, Hot Toys is known for their detail. They know their, they do their research on the films. <coughs> Here's a cool little, you know, kit that uh, Ichabod Crane has in the film. All his lotions and potions and whatnot. And you gotta have, and the head sculpt's actually quite nice too. I think I like it better than Mediacom, but you gotta put those goggles on. It just gives it the better look. I just love that look. Here's Hot Toys Tonto from The Lone Ranger. Love the detail. Here's the base. Yeah, I like that detail, love that look. And there's Edward Scissorhands. 
Hot Toys. Edward Scissorhands here was the first Hot Toys figure I ever bought, and he was 800 because of the detail and the body. He comes with the base, but he's standing fine on his own. The scissor hands, the mechanics on the scissor hands are really, really cool. I had to put that together on him. It didn't come like that, so Hot Toys does that. They, they like you to do a lot of the work, too, not just them, <laughs> even though you're spending 800 bucks on their figure. But, yeah, that's that. I'm going to go across here to the bottom here, show you some more Disney Night Before Christmas Big Fix from Disney. There's Locke. He is, let's see, 20 inches tall? Yeah, 20 inches tall. There's Shock. With the hat, she's 27 inches. The bases are heavy. They're all heavy. Um, they, each of these were, yeah, let me show you barrel here real quick. Barrel's 19 inches. But um, they made 300 of each of these and they should be sold as a set. I know a lot of people can't afford the whole set because you're talking 900 bucks, and then with shipping, you're talking well over a grand. I've seen them as high as 1,800 on eBay. But uh, there's only 300 of each that were made. So they're very limited. But really, sellers should try to sell them as a set if they have them all. I've seen them sold individually for 150 bucks, and that's fine. If you only have one and you want to sell it, go for it, but... I hate it when they break sets up because that's really meant to be as a set. That's just me being picky. Shut up, Clay. All right. Um, <laughs> okay, let's see. I think that's all. Oh, no, it isn't. I got some more Tim Burton stuff to show you. Uh, let's go back here, here a little bit. Sorry for the camera, guys. But as I said before, I showed you that photo still. There were 10 bucks. That was 10 bucks. A corpse ride. Here's some more photo stills. They're 8 by 8s from Corpse Bride. So I've shown to you real here. And they all go down the wall here. Show you that real quick. That centerpiece was a piece my wife bought me at uh, Hobby Lobby. That was really cool. That was a good centerpiece for this. And here's a photo still. Victor's from there. Pastor Gone's well. Again, these are about ten bucks on eBay. You can probably still get them too. And they're re they're really cool, very nice, clear, detailed photo stills. Very nice quality. There's Victor, and of course there is Emily. Okay, moving down. Going down. Last two Disney Night Before Christmas Big Figs to show you. Here's Jack Skeleton. He's 32 inches tall. Uh, got him from a very kind Disney collector from Florida. She was an older woman and she was selling her collection off because I'm afraid she was um, dying. She didn't tell me that in particular, but she's selling her collection and she was talking about life, so... I think she was getting ready to pass, but I developed a correspondence with her, very nice lady. But she sold me this for a good price, cheaper than what Amazon wants. Amazon wants uh, 600 not including the 200 for shipping, so he's about 8 on Amazon. I got him with shipping almost 6 so I saved a little bit. Cool story about this one, um, interesting story at least. Uh, she shipped him right before Hurricane Irma hit. And that crack on Zero's uh, back there is a result of it. Um, got damaged in route. That's the only damage, though. And if that was the only damage, I mean, look at the bone hands and the head, the tips of the bat. You know, if that was the only damage that it suffers, then I say it's a win. That was the only damage. But uh, I took a Loctite, which is an instant bonder, and filled in the crack. Never came off. It was just a nice crack. And I put a white paint to cover the crack because it was a black crack all the way down the back. And I just wanted to track from it, so I put a nice white. I know it's an off-white. It doesn't match him, but it's better than what the crack showed. 
you know, the crack was dark black and it just didn't look good. Can never sell him for what he's worth now, but that's okay. I don't plan on selling him. He's a cool piece. Okay, here's Sally. Another last big fig, Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, limited to 300. Jack was limited to 250, 300. But you can still find them on eBay. I'm not sure about Sally. Sally's kind of hard to find. Beware of copycats. Beware of bootleg statues of these. They are out there on eBay. They are not Disney licensed. They are not made by Disney. All the ones I've showed you are made by Disney. There are some out there on eBay, and you could tell that they're mock ups. They're, you know, they're copies. They can't make it look like Disney's Night Before Christmas because they don't have permission. So they make up these knockoffs that just aren't as good quality as the Disney's are. So just be aware of that. They're out there on eBay right now. I saw a few of them. And they go pretty, they go pretty cheap. But that's because they are cheap. Uh, her eyelashes came off during shipping. And the cat whiskers did too. But you know what? It was okay because they were made of very flimsy, very fine black plastic. <laughs> and if you sneezed on it, they came off. So it's okay. And again, if that's the only damage that happened during shipping of these huge things, heavy, huge things. That's a win in my book. Just is. Considering how much shipping is and how fragile they are and how heavy they are and trying to find a shipper that'll ship them. Yeah, that's a win. Okay, let me show you real quick here. I believe that's all the uh, Nightmare for Christmas stuff and Tim Burton stuff I've got to show you. Um, just looking around to make sure it is because I don't want to forget anything. Let me show you the last part of my man clay, which is my kids' involvement in musical theater. And if you're going to have a musical theater wall dedicated to your kids, then you got to have a Sweeney Todd. That's a painting, a Sweeney Todd that I got from an eBay seller in Japan. It's not on canvas, it's not on paper, it's like plastic paper. I'm not sure how to describe it. It's pretty flimsy, flimsy but it's very nice. Very nice painting. Found a frame for him. Pretty cool. And also, if you're going to have a musical theater wall, you got to have the theater masks there. But here's posters of various shows that my daughter and my son did in their high school productions. Taylor was in Taylor, my son Taylor, which is, that's him right there. It's Conrad Birdie and Bye Bye Birdie for Children's Theater Mason. <coughs> Taylor got involved in musical theater while in high school. He got involved with his high school and he got in High school productions, and he got involved in theater with Children's Theater of Mason. His sister, Morgan, my daughter, who's right there, um, she's been involved in musical theater since she was five. She's done professional theater for Children's Theater of Cincinnati. She's involved in Children's Theater of Mason. She's involved with East Side Players. She's done dinner theater for La Comedia. She's majoring in musical theater at Kent. So, yeah, she's... She knew what she wanted to do right from the get-go. She loves theater. That's my son in his, uh, all his high school productions he did in his high school. These are various shots of my daughter, Morgan, and her, some roles that she's done. One on the far right is professional, believe it or not. The second from the left is Annie. She played an orphan. I think she played Susie. That was Lock Media Dinner Theater. There's Morgan as Shrek's mother in Shrek. Here she is. I can't remember what show she did. I can't remember what show that was. That might have been... Uh... Oh, shoot, I can't think of it. Uh, what... Much to do about nothing. So, William Shakespeare is much to do about nothing. I think that's what that was. And that's her top left corner as... Oh, gosh. Annie. Uh, Carol Burnett's part in Annie. Forgive me, I Mrs. Hannigan, that was her. That's her Mrs. Hannigan, top left. That's her as a drowsy chaperone, top right. Drowsy chaperone meaning drunk chaperone. She plays a good drunk, who knew? <laughs> and that's her in West Side Story on the bottom right, where she sang, uh, There is a Place for Us. West Side Story is beautiful, made me cry. That's my baby. Can you tell I'm proud of her? <laughs> um... That's all her high school productions she's done for her high school. 
And she did Lay Miss and she's done Pippin. But here's one of my favorite moments for her. We went to Disney World July 2nd, uh, 2014. And we had a coaxer in to try and out for American Isle experience, which they had at MGM Studios. Uh, we had to talk her into it. So you had to audition for it. They had, you had to, they had to like you to accept you for the audition. Then they had five rounds and there's uh, three people in each round. And the winner of, it, of each round went to the final. And she won her um, round against two other people. And then she went to the final and she won. And I was so proud of her. That's the woman she went up against. It was between her and Morgan there. And that's Morgan finding out that she actually won. And they pulled the classic Ryan Seacrest move where, you know, oh, you didn't win, sorry, have a good day. And they say, oh, wait a minute, come back. They pulled the same thing on her. Everyone went, oh, man, really? And that's the glitter coming down. She's so embarrassed and so humble that she can't believe she won. <coughs> she won. She sung a song from Mulan. And her voice just sounds so beautiful, if I do say so myself, which I will because I'm her father. That's what fathers are supposed to do for their daughters, brag about their daughters. Um, they showed these little, they had these little TVs in the stage where they had the show. And so you could see her on stage there on the TVs. And they also had a big jumbotron outside of the stage in MGM. So while you're walking, you see this big jumbotron and there's my daughter. I watched it from the outside because I wanted to see what it looked like on the outside. It was so cool to see people that you didn't know stop and watch my daughter sing. It was just such a great feeling. So I was so proud of her. Still am. Proud of my son too. Yeah, that was a great day. It was an awesome day. They don't have that anymore at uh, American Idol Experience, even though they brought the show back, but they don't have it anymore. Maybe they'll bring it back. We'll see. Uh, let's see. Now that's a man cave my wife got me from Hobby Lobby that I didn't have any room for, so I put it sideways, and I kind of like how it looks. Just a little man cave sign. Wish it had an L between the C and the A. Man, Clave. <laughs> that is a Pirate of the Caribbean Dead Men Tell No Tales blanket that my mother-in-law gave me for Christmas. My mother and father-in-law gave me for Christmas, and she made it for me. Um, loved it. Came home from work one night, and Mary had it for me in the car. And I just loved it so much. I had to call her and say how much I love this, but that was really nice of her and Jim to do. Uh, I'm trying to remember everything. There is one more thing. Oh, two more things, actually. Here's some various roles that my kids were in, some highlight roles. This is Taylor as Rum Tug Tugger in uh, Cats, Turn Cedar Mesa. This is Morgan in one of her favorite roles that she played, her high school production of Beauty and the Beast, where she played Belle. This is Taylor in his high school production of Your Good Man, Charlie Brown, where he played Linus. This is Morgan as Jenny Annie Dots and Children's Theater made some production of Cats. This is Taylor as Joseph in C uh, Children's Theater Mason's version of Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat. This is Morgan as Annie and East Side Players Annie. And that's Taylor as Scarecrow and his high school production of Wizard of Oz. And I'll never forget there was a guy that watched that show, that production, and said that Taylor, my son, looked like a reincarnate of Ray Bolter because he was moving around the stage like Ray Bolter. He was dancing on Ray Bolter. Ray Bolter was a very physical actor, great dancer, and Taylor, uh, Taylor really represented him well, is what he said. So, here's one more thing to show you. Just trying to remember everything, so that's why I was pausing there. These are yard signs from various shows that my kids did. They're yard signs that I collected out of neighborhoods. I went to various neighborhoods to get these and I pulled them out of the ground once the show was over. But I wanted them for the wall here, the stairwell wall, leading down to my man cave. But that's what those are. Okay, I'm hoping, well, let me show you two more things that my uh, children's Seder, my kids did. But this one over here has Taylor stuff. Some of his programs and pictures of him, and there's me and Mary. Some friends from high school. They're thespians, fellow thespians, that's what they call them. 
theater in high school, lesbians. And here's Morgan's little window. And you could tell Morgan's a little more fuller. <laughs> She's done so much. And this is not even all of it, but uh, Selfie was one of the best ones I've ever seen her do. It made me cry, it made a lot of people cry. And she played a cancer student with cancer. Just, gosh, she was so good in that. But um, yeah, those are her various shows and some little memorabilia programs and stuff. Yeah. Okay, I'll give you one last look. Man cave here. Oh, and in case some of you gearheads are wondering, I'll show you this. That's a 3D projector made by Epson. And that TV back there is a Sony 3D TV. 55 inch. But yeah, that's my gear. And you know what that is. That's a 27 inch Mac. And that's a 17 inch MacBook Pro they don't even make anymore. Well, that's my gear that I have intertwined with my main clave. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for bearing with me. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to post this on YouTube. Hopefully, my son will show me how to do that. I'm still, still not sure how to do that, but uh, I'm confident he is such a good man that he'll show me how to do it, or he'll do it himself because he's a good kid, good young man. Show you one last zoom of stuff here. And I am going to say, I bid you adieu.